What's up guys, welcome to a very special video. In the last couple of episodes, we talked about bringing our own team to Driftmasters for 2024. But in this video, we decided to put all the best bits of the 2023 season into just one video. None of the filler, all of the killer. This is the story and kind of the documentary of behind the scenes at Driftmasters 2023. You're gonna enjoy it. our backyard in Mondello Park and this is a tricky event for us because we're kind of three different things at this event number one we are the full media team for Driftmasters we're also doing commentary we're doing all the video the photos and all that good stuff we're also running the car show at Modified Live which is the car show element of this event and we're also the promoter for the entire event so there's kind of three things going on at the one time but what is cool about this Driftmasters event is that we get to have all of our Drift Games cars here and some of them you haven't seen on the channel yet so I'm gonna give you a little tour of what we've got on the stand this year starting off with my finished S14 as you guys can see this thing is just been wrapped up and uh, it looks sensational we are actually on the ground beside us another car on BC racing coilovers is our boy Craig's PS 13 freshly painted freshly revealed my PS 13 big wheel switch up this year with the Strom wheels one of one three-piece forged wheels are so new they don't even have a model name yet but they look amazing on this car check that fitment out our boy Bingo, Darren Coleman, Craig dad, Craig's dad with his old new Porsche. The dish on these wheels are ridiculous. Looks wicked. We got the Super lineup. We got my A90 sitting on a course, one piece Stroms, BC Racing coilovers. And we got it beside the old school Supra. So you got the new Supra, and you got the old Supra. We got Josh's Oryx 7 FC, looking pretty in yellow. Another BC equipped car. This is a new car for the channel. Adam's been building this off the cameras. It looks really, really cool. It is an MX-5 NA. My favorite part of the car, Adam, is these. Of course, gotta keep our boy Wayne happy. We got his beautiful 180 SOR 2.2, 500 plus horsepower drift car. And there's one thing missing from the stand, Blaine, which everyone will have seen by now. The Corvette. Nobody has seen the Corvette Barros, and it's gonna go on this tough tile setup, this podium. 2 p.m. at the main event tomorrow and everyone's gonna get their reaction. guys don't really see when you watch Driftmasters live on Red Bull TV is the amount of work and people behind the scenes making that broadcast happen. We started doing live stream for IDC which is probably about eight years ago. It was one transit van, a great crew from Ireland called See It Live, shout out to them all. And now it's just gone to full TV production rehearsals. It is crazy. Check out the amount of equipment these guys have to bring with them everywhere they go. Busy, busy. <laughs> These guys are working super hard and we have to bring in a lot of these offices, so you'll see them here, all production offices, which are pretty much for all of the teams, the staff, so we have production meetings, rehearsals, it is a proper TV show now. Actually working on this? So would you believe, working on the Red Bull TV production between the drone guys, the onboard cameras, I think there's 92 people. Seriously? And that's not including judges, Ian and I in the commentary tower or any of that, that's just... Or our media team. Or our, so that's yeah. probably a hundred and... 10 people working on the media for Driftmasters, which is mind work. All right guys, we are here in the tower, and this tower was built on top of a Mercedes Sprinter van. And this van was actually the first thing I ever purchased on my drift career. So when I started running the Irish Drift Championship about eight, 10 years ago, this was the first thing we bought, and we converted the roof of it into a platform because we used to put up and down scaffolding every time it took like hours so this goes up in like half an hour and it's still here it's still the tower in ireland used it's now used for the irish drift championship well the, the technology in here has gotten a little bit better though as well 
small the better than my laptop and an iPhone cable, just keeping the whole thing going. <laughs> So this is our view for the weekend. So what's really strange about commentary at Driftmasters is we actually don't see any drifting in real life most of the time. We watch it all through the screen. You can see here Kevin Quinn. Uh, so they're testing the cars right now. Just blew the back uh, tire off the rim there. So a little bit of action straight away in practice. party this weekend for sure. We've got a full information uh, iPad here so this gives us all the scores from the judges, it gives us telemetry stuff like that. Here we can choose to speak to the director, to the track manager, to whoever we want. We've got on airs and mutes so if you want to have a cough or you want to have a drink you got to mute it because otherwise everyone at home is listening to gloop 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 so you have to <laughs> basically mute all that stuff. These are our headsets and basically look at Dwayne, boom, knocking cones over on the screen. So uh, yeah, we got a great view from every single angle. All right guys, qualifying is starting for round one of Drift Masters. Let's get to it. What a way to kick off round one of the 2023 Drift Masters European Championship. Qualifying was nothing short of exciting and entertaining. Let's take a look at the top three moments. Third place was Connor Shanahan. An impressive run in challenging weather conditions. Very well, nice entry from Connor Shanahan. Gets it perfect on those inside lines. Really nice for Connor Shanahan. Absolutely textbook so far. Does a good job of staying to that end. So he is a very technical driver. He doesn't make many errors. So when that car is working, he said he's always working. It's all about the car. And if you go, this is perfect for Connor Shanahan. So far, very technical all the way around the circuit. Exactly. In second place was Jack Shanahan. Not to be outdone by his younger brother, Jack went one better and put in a 94-point run in challenging weather conditions too. Jack Shanahan goes for it, he's super wide, he's on the rumble strips, but he keeps it together. Shanahan deep on inside zone one, goes very wide, drops a wheel with the mud, but he doesn't care, he keeps going. Look at the line into outside zone four, hammers the throttle down as he now dials on the angle, looks for outside zone five, collects it perfectly, goes for the wall run, and Shanahan gets the job. Look how wide he's in six, just floating with the edge of the circuit, onto the wall, outside zone seven, in the bag. For taking first place, the one and only James the Machine Dean. A pinpoint accurate run with an initiation that they said couldn't be done. That initiation alone was worth all of the points. Look at that from James Dean as he absolutely annihilates the first outside zones on the foot brake. What was going? James Dean is dialed, he's a man possessed. As he looks for the wall, gets it absolutely pinpoint perfect. And James Dean sticks it to the wall once again and goes wider again to the edge of the circuit and says, job done. Well, that's a masterclass right there. I, I, we've just watched so many drivers struggle with that initiation. And some of the best in the business have said, I am playing with that. I'm coming in safe. He threw it 90 degrees to the, on the first corner and he's pumped that grandstand up. up well, here we are the calm after the literal storm that was Mandela today. Very wet in qualifying. James Dean, that lad, top qualifying. And uh, it was a really good day. We had a fun time getting back into the swing of it with Ian on the commentary, had a blast. All the team were working super hard. But today is only the warm up. This video is only the warm up, really, for the next video you're gonna see on the channel, which is the main event day. already these G R eighty six look deadly what are you up to? 
every single time you catch me, I swear you're the jinx. I put my cameras on cars and then they go back to the pits. That's kind of how my life is going at the moment. I started with three and now I have one. You started with, you started with three? But yeah. So, you gave me your special GoPro as well. I don't know where that is. Have you lost my GoPro? Maybe. The weather is beautiful here today. Fingers crossed we get it for the whole day. What a cool idea if you haven't got your livery done yet. Surprisingly well. Surprisingly. We usually get to this day and it's fairly hectic and panicked and we've done loads wrong and everything like that. Weirdly, nothing has gone wrong, which means today's gonna be an absolute disaster on the main day. No, 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 no. Nothing's gonna go wrong, it's fine. The sun is shining, everything's going smoothly. I've never seen Adam so relaxed at an event before. It's unsettling. Go back tandem. Yeah, right tandem. Do I have to hug you then? Optional. Jesus, okay. Here we go. This is not, not, nothing wrong about two dudes just riding an electric scooter back to the pits. Oh my god, the fucking oh, got uh, So when it beeps, it means it just continues building speed until it maxes out. The good thing is we look cool as well. Oh, we do, yes. Especially with me hugging you. Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah. just shine out my crotch then? Whoa! Oh my god, that <laughs> was fucking sketchy. We may have picked the wrong way. I think so. Because now we're gonna have to go past the grandstand. Oh, we, we can. The, like, grand, the grandstand's full. Full commitment, alright? Th this is full commitment. We're going 19 kilometers an hour. Josh, I feel weird like this. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I lie. haven't actually been this close. Like, it's it's unsettling. It's been a long time, has it, Blaine? It ha yeah, it has been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, don't break! Oh my god! I'm gonna right, just going up to the top of the tower to get a bird's eye view of this place. Whoa. That is quite a crowd. Well look, Felix Lindvall, he gets another roll of the dice, Dave. Here what does go. he do this time? He knows the pace from Shanahan, and now he has to deal with it again. He gets left once again on the initiation. <laughs> Shanahan on that perfect lead line, but Lindvall gives him the run, doesn't it? Dudu's going to deduct me for slowing there, I'm not going to slow there. And Linval makes an error on his own. He yeah. was on a little too much angle there on the chase. Shannon with the advantage, he's had to do this the hard way um, and go through a second run. But it goes to show the judge is not leaving anyone any room for error on this track. No, certainly not. And the only way I can take that is now.
into our merch tent and we're going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of a speech before we reveal the car and obviously all of our sponsors and our partners are there from Link ECU, Mobile One, from BC Racing and from Strong Wheels so everyone's in the house today it's a big pressure moment but uh, hopefully everyone loves the car so let's go uh, do that well uh, yeah here it is our 2023 C7 we're going to call it the F6 Corvette it's pretty different right and yes it has no front fenders on purpose <laughs> That's an easy way of doing it. It's a it's a it's a black car like it's lovely. It's black. It's black. It's black. It's black. So thank you guys so much. Pretty decent reaction. Oh, mental! I didn't think that many people would be here to look at it, but they love it. So uh, good job, Darren. You like it? I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's different. <laughs> Great hell reaction. Yeah. Is it? I haven't been able to get to it since, so... I was about to say, you know it's a good car when you can't get your own car. No one can see any of it. Looks cool though. The graphics came out really well. What a great day so far. Now we got to go and present the hype up for the top 16. This is always a nerve-wracking bit. Uh, but we're pumped. It's like, what is it, like 15,000 people here? 16,000 people? It's crazy. Look at the place. I'm not sure, but it looks pretty jammed. I can't see any cars or anything. There's just too many people. It's nuts. Irish car scene coming in strong this weekend. Top 16 parade done. Did our intro to the show with Becky. Ian star of the show now. I gotta run up to the tower, get this thing kicked off. Good, good. How are you? I'm alright. 
Oh, he got the launch. <laughs> got the launch. <laughs> I was in, I was in comfort mode. It's cool, no, there's the last corner of the track, and there's our hotel. <laughs> in the beer already, Josh. I'm a bit of a casual one, huh? I am. I see a load of lads from the north and south of the circle, you go. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's the Swedish 2J. T6. Yeah. The turbo is uh, 1200 or 1150 100 horsepower. The car is running that horsepower at the moment. Here we will go for max boost. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I had 16 hours. Extremely. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Behind the Smoke with BC Racing Coilovers. We are here at the Drive Center Arena in Sweden for Drift Masters Round 2. Yesterday, we were traveling. It's a long trip to this place. It is two flights and two hours in a car because you're in the Arctic Circle. You're right up the top of the world. I'm sure we'll show you where we are in the world right now. And it's gonna be a busy weekend. This championship is growing strength to strength. There's a lot of cool drivers, a lot of cool cars, and this track is super fast and super sketchy. And it's, it's our home for like four or five days now because we're staying on site, we're living here, and there's no nighttime. It's just daylight, 24 hours a day. So it's a pretty weird event. You guys are along for the ride. Whoa, look at the diamond a gear off. Definitely not fake. That is so nice. It's a bit cramped in here. Oh, my ball hair is caught on my pants. <laughs> Go on, get in there, Jordan. Way too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah, One of the busiest days because we do a lot of photos, a lot of videos, a lot of reels, a lot of planning for the weekend, a lot of meetings with the production team, meetings with all the different staff members, driver representatives. It's a lot of talking. My voice is nearly gone before I even get to commentary, but everything is now in place for the weekend. Everybody is ready. Tomorrow's the big day, show time. Time to go play some pool, relax before we kick it off. That walking didn't look staged at all. What? <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Hi. I'm here with Josh. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Today is, what day is today, actually? I'm, lo I'm losing track. Friday. It's Friday. Friday. That time lapse that you just watched doesn't get dark here, and everybody's body clocks are completely messed up. Today is qualifying, and right now they're doing practice, and then the main competition is tomorrow. Me and Adam are just gonna wander around. So it's kind of a bit like a calm before the storm right now, you know? So yeah. I think we're just gonna annoy Josh for a little bit, because that's kind of like the funnest part of Drift Master. That sounds like a good idea, yeah? Right. I've had about five hours sleep between the last two days, and I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Josh, as usual at Drift Masters, is making all the content for Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. And Adam is doing stories and TikToks. Stories and TikToks. Just. <laughs> understand why you pay Josh so much money like no, I could just do it on my no, own we don't it's okay <laughs> <laughs> Tower. 
I'm going to give you guys a little tour of where we are behind the scenes, how it all works for us. So let's go inside. Tunes are happening here. So this is our commentary booth for the event. Um, a lot of people don't see this, but this is our commentary notes. So this is actually an order of qualifying. So as a driver goes out, we can actually see where they're from, what car they're driving, their previous results, all that kind of stuff. So we're not super knowledgeable. We do know a bit, but we do use this to help ourselves. We've actually got a great view of the track here for once. Usually we don't see much of it, but to be honest, we'll be watching everything through the screen. That's actually what we commentate on, not what we see outside. Oh, so the boys heading to the tower. Actually, this is something we need to introduce on the vlog. This is the second best commentator in Driftmasters. <laughs> wow. I get paid a little bit of money every round for uh, my health insurance because obviously if you're carrying Ian the whole weekend, it's hard, oh. on, the, it's hard on the back. And there's Kevin O'Connell. Um, so guys? Yeah, so he's the guy that makes all the wrong decisions for Driftmasters. The usual, yeah. yeah. Somebody's got to do it, Dave. <laughs> Someone's, got, Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to be terrible at it. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you and Ian are killing it, in yeah, my opinion. We are, yeah, we are. Anyway, we're going to qualifying. Ian will be talking rubbish and Kevin will be making all the wrong calls and I'll be sitting there just going, what am I even doing here? Yeah. <laughs> I had no words. I was like, everyone at home is going to know the truth. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone's, everyone's sitting at home watching the vlog on YouTube. Be like, that's fly. Dave is so it's definitely the second best commentator. I'm the second best commentator if the other commentator was me. <laughs> <laughs> me. I, I have no words now. Yeah. I've literally oh, run out of words. I've got to use Classic more words. Classic on the commentary, today. of course. No oh, words. Oh. Chinese Dave, you do realise that we have to go to rehearsal, like you want to. Actually, yeah, we come and do, do a, the we job. Have to do a test run, Dave. Yeah. That's what, exactly where I was going now. Yeah. Just, go, just to hold your hands I was hands going now, this way just it? to go back that way. Well, I don't need rehearsals. Obviously, the boys need a bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Joshy, qualifying's over. What are you up to? Making the qualifying highlights. And now I have to have this out in. Like Half an hour? No, pretty much. Well, Keen will ask for it now, and I will tell him an hour, and he will compromise at half an hour. <laughs> so we're finished up today. It was qualifying. It's just the formality. It's kind of the warm up for the main event, which is tomorrow. The place is going to be packed. We're in such a cool location. It's now like midnight, as you can see. It doesn't get dark, uh, so we're all a little bit discombobulated. But tomorrow, it's going to be wild. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning everybody, it's Saturday, it's the main day, it's the, when the battles are on. Pits are a bit of a hive of activity. Sweet Jesus, what is this? Snow would be over the turbo water. Is this how people get to work in Sweden? 700 horsepower in the snow would be. That is crazy. WRC champion Calais is back for his second round of Drift Masters. First round he came to was in Modelo Park last year and uh, he was disappointed with his top eight finish, but he's back now in a super and it looks wicked. <laughs> Best looking car in the grid? I think so. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hello. So the practice session was almost finished and poor Orion Nielsen who had an awful crash last year just had another whopper crash. He rolled his car we think two or three times and the team are racing to try and get him back out again. I don't know. hands on deck for the entire team to try and get them back out again like if they can get them back out again they are miracle workers oh yeah and it seems quite shook after that understandably so it's inside the car yes so it is 20 to 2 right now they have 20 minutes until the battle starts <laughs> Yeah. 
I'd like to say I'm shocked, but I know this team quite well at this point, and when I saw it, I was like, it looks pretty bad, but Oyan's not dead, so that probably means that the car is going to be back together, and because he qualified third yesterday, it means he is here on the list, heat 13, which means they've had extra time, basically, to get the car ready, all legally, you know, um, and he's going up against Pontus Hartmann, but Pontus Hartmann's a pretty good pilot, and he's from Sweden, so we'll see what happens. I think everything is this team is literally like his brother, his best friend, the, the guy that he's done sim racing for 13 years. They're not a huge group of super well trained yeah, yeah. race mechanics, they are just the boys, you know? This is the best sport in the world. Look! The minutes, the minutes. <laughs> I think there's like two battles before he needs to be on the start line. Orian has stayed in the car the entire time. I think at this stage if he doesn't get out, I I'll cry. Roll this car two, possibly three times, and the whole team gets the car back out again. Not just his team, other teams, the pits, other drivers, and yeah, he's off to the start line. I love this sport. Oran Nilsson, that crew, and these Swedish will not give up. Oran Nilsson pulls to the line in a car that looks like it's fresh out of the scrapyard, Dave, it's but it's working. <laughs> One of our media guys came back to me and they counted 38 people fixed that car. 38 people were working on that car to get it back out. An hour and a half ago, he was out of the game. Pontus Harman is applauding his opponent, push it. Yeah, saying that he's rolled over twice in practice and the car is still back together. Back of it doesn't even look like it was in a crash. Certainly are in time now. Their third place qualifier fires in. Or Nielsen on an absolute flyer. Puts foot to floor as he fires through that first inside zone. Catches a little bit of understeer, but no big mistake now as Oren Nielsen looks for the outside zone down the hill. Gets it timed perfectly. Just about drags a wheel through that second inside Zone transitions back. Pontus Hartman not in the fight though. Mid track wheels on the curb as Pontus Hartman desperate to get a wheel onto the door of Oren Nielsen's Toyota Sora as he goes onto the wall across the line. What a guy it's is Oren Nielsen. Incredible scenes and the whole audience here know because that most of those audience were in pit lane yep. watching those guys work on that car. I mean, think about it this way. If you rolled your car and you went to an auto body repair and said, look, I've rolled my car twice. Uh, I need you to fix it. They're gonna be like, whoa. Oh. It's gonna be a couple of months. No, it'd be a new car. It'd be a it'd new be a, car. Just, it'd be just, just get a new one. We didn't get the victory, but I think it's a victory in itself that you and the team are back out on track. How does it feel, man? I don't know what to say. I mean, these guys work so hard, and all the teams were working on the car and got the car ready in the last second. 
and I was just trying to keep my calm and uh, put on a hell of a re lead run and I think uh, it, the car felt good actually so uh, I'm quite happy this is a victory for us to just be out there again after double rolling uh, out there so uh, I don't know what to say I mean, I'm just very happy but we have to fix the car and we'll be back in Finland definitely not long at all man. I can't wait to see you back again thank you Hello. Hello. Busy tonight? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah. Thanks for yeah. jumping in. Yeah. And now I'm just meeting up with some friends at the finish line there. We're, gonna, we're just going to watch the show. So. I mean, I'm quite lonely. Could I, could I come? Like... No, it's not really one of those. It, I, I would. No, no, but no, you don't have to explain it. No, yeah, it's just, you know, it's kind of tickets only. But yeah, next time, maybe. If, yeah. if I'm free. Yeah, if you're free. Yes. We're now heading to Top 16 Parade. Uh, yeah. yeah. Last uh, two hours of the show. Most exciting part. Look at that. Proper car with a rubber. Dave, so who's your money on? Who do you think will be on the podium? I don't know. Today, normally I can, but today I, it's been really unpredictable with Peter going out of top 32. So now I'm going to say Laurie Heinen and Dwayne are kind of my two picks at the moment. But then with the way things are going, it could be totally unpredictable. So I like unpredictable actually. I don't really care who wins. I just like a good show that is exciting and unpredictable. So to be loud though. Dwayne McKeever's got the anti lag on, so it's okay. going to be loud. You have a squat walk. Could the Ronin squat? You have to walk like an idiot when you're using the Ronin. What the f was that? Oh, 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 that drone has got it down now because no! I'm scared the fuck out of me! No noise breaks around here anyways. The timing of Ian's top 16 there and it just went Oh, I was scared of the shit out of me. You didn't expect that at all, did you? No! Just out of nowhere. I was watching it come in going, wait. And then he goes, top 16. Wow! I was about to die. <laughs> it wasn't Wayne this time. Start your engine, Jack. Yeah, just... <laughs> well, that was pretty special. What is that? <laughs> My ears actually hurt after that. So whenever the fighter jet was flying, right? If you can see the crosshairs here, I honestly got it into my head that I was like shooting it down. <laughs> <laughs> like I could hear it. Missile <laughs> activated. Do I have clearance? Do I have clearance? <laughs> I might be a little bit biased, but I do feel like Irish fans are pretty good. Irish but fans are amazing. The finish do give us a run for our money. Finish. Laurie Hyman was up next. I think we should probably go up into the grandstand and sit there. Finn's right there, so let's yeah. go for that. Down, are we, Josh? <laughs> Playing a little bit of a game just right now. I nailed it, dude. <laughs> credit where credit is due, that was a cracker. <laughs> Humble as always. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
together all the way from Japan for Naoki Nakamura. quite pale there. Oh my god. That was far better than I thought it was going to be. It was excellent. It's a good view of the track, but I feel like it's going to drop very quickly. <laughs> oh my fucking god! Oh my sweet Jesus. <laughs> that was amazing. That's what happens when Josh's drone hits a pylon and falls out of the sky. <laughs> practice and the grandstands are already full and people are clapping and stuff already. So, Pierre, what's the track like to shoot? What's it like? Incredible. It's a theme park. There's people going around on roller coasters. I was one of those, unfortunately. I saw the footage, bro. Yeah. It actually looks quite small, but it's kind of the small tracks that suit drifting better. <laughs> Completely offline, but it's very exciting to watch this there. <laughs> Here comes my favourite car. Just listen. <laughs> Finished car, we're loving that. As Jeremy Clarkson would say, I think I've just had a crisis. I love that car. <laughs> are insanely glamorous office for the weekend. Smelly in here, Blaine, don't come in. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it smells like shit. Pretty really sure going, Josh has I'm a going, massive part to play. He always has a part to play. I did a few. Did, Quite did, a few. Did you just do one right there? No, I didn't do one right there. That's what they always say. This is oh. a seriously messy table to be fair. My area is clear. That's Dave Egan's area. That's his bag. That's his bug spray. That is his salad from yesterday. There are his little pinwheel things that he was eating. So yeah, there. That's very good. Five, four, three, two. One, top. How many free we start with the common name? Four, three, two, start four, one. 
for top Q. And Hello and two. welcome to round three of the Driftmasters European Championship. Fans are the next. We're the coming to two with the finish flag. We've taken it far too and little coming this weekend. To two. We'll get uh, to the next just so you know, we're going to interview four, Christina four, after the uh, second six, qualifying six, run has finished. Thank you. Coming to six. Six top. Good luck, Josh. Well, have you seen outside? This is the correct look. Look at these. What are those? They're crocs, mate. Fresh Jimmy Oaks. Are you going to go sports mode or comfort mode? Up a little bit. That's what she said. I thought you were cool. <laughs> um, I'm missing a coat, boys. Well, let me tell you this one. Well, that is That's miserable. You look so happy. I am, and I believe this is the correct word, sopping. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, no. We have a winner. How do you feel? I like thank my friends, my family. Dwayne McKeever, who is leading the championship at the moment, is currently sitting outside top 32 with a zero. He's got one run in the wet to get in. So let's see if he can manage to pull it off. He is, but he looks like he's making it work right now, but he needs a good score. He needs to be in the show. He needs to keep hold of it. He's a 77 or more right now as McKeever looks for inside zone three. Now is it. Dials on the angle now as he looks for the outside zone four. He's going wide. He's going to request the judges. He puts a bumper to the wall. Now as McKeever comes down, outside zone for field. A little dab of the handbrake. He's going very wide, but he swings the car across the circuit. He keeps it on the track. No, don't go off. Wide. 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 It looked pretty good, it looked pretty good! Oh, no. <laughs> Release, oh, no, Relief, no, no. fresh. <laughs> He's about to try and blow up his engine now, so let's... Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> it's an 84, he's in the show, in the 21st show. position. I just took my fingers off my ears. The place is in absolute mess. The lights, bits. <laughs> Look at this thing. Bumpers, a bit of concrete. There you go. Everything's broken. We, let's have a quiz to see if we can tell what parts are from what car. That's Edinburgh Haskell's app. That's an E92, I think. E92. That's an S15 rear light by the looks of it. Definitely. I don't know what that is. That is a B46 inner light, I'd say. Probably you know it's bad when they're in such small pieces that you can't even make out what they are. Anyway, we're gonna get some food. That was a crazy day, lightning coming down and thunder. And so tonight we're gonna get some food, relax. Tomorrow, main event. The best in the business in Europe.
Give it up for you all in today. Give it up for me, your Jesse Corby. is about to happen here. My voice is gone before you can start top 16. This is the wildest place I've ever been for drifting. It's like a football match. We had screaming, shunting, the anthem, and we had someone propose to someone on the track who said yes. Now I gotta get live on Red Bull TV. Goosebumps, man. This place is, this is, this is like, this is the best. This is the best. This is, the, this is amazing. This is what, what you do this for. This is what you do this for. Right, I gotta go. to the final to face his own brother. So Connor and Jack are both in the final. I'm so happy for them. Like it's just so cool to see two of them like one do well and then two to both be in the final together after not having the best start of the season. And obviously you can see what it means to the rest of the family and the crew and the other teams. So I said it the last time in Sweden after Orion got his car back out after rolling but I'll say it again. I Love this sport. Congrats. Hey, Connor man. versus Jack in the final. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to get the slagging after the question? <laughs> 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 You're the fellow with the eye patch. Go through a machine. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> 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 Which one do you want to talk to the radio instead? I really can do the last one. I think no matter who wins here, it's a win for both of them either way. team is just on cloud nine. The lights will go green and here we are brother versus brother for top step on the podium. Through the gears they go Shanahan versus Shanahan. Wow and no messing around. Jack almost makes contact with Connor on the initiation they're both up and into the wall and Jack is all over the side of his brother's GT86 on the curb on the door on the wall does it make sense? They're not going to let it make sense as they fire through. Separation as Jack gives Connor the room to manoeuvre now. As Jack once again looks for a side. Shannon in the lead, Connor Shannon is 
chase. Mono on mono, brother on brother, GT86 versus GT86. Wow, look at Connor, he's not giving him an inch, he's not letting him move. He's gonna barely let him breathe as he transitions through that inner zone. Down they come, and now Jack squeezes the accelerator, tries to separate him, but he can't. And Connor almost takes him out on the transition. He looks for the transition back, and Connor's closer than he was before. And now look at this. Welcome to Regan's round four of the Driftmasters European Championship. We are behind the smoke with BC Racing, and this weekend is going to be wilder than any other because it's the party city. We are partying, we're drifting, we've got comments to do, we've got media to do, and this track is the fastest you've ever seen. It's absolutely wild. <laughs> We're gonna do some sketchy shit. The last time I was in Riga here with you, you brought me to some sketchy places. Yes. Let's 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 go again. Let's go again. Yeah. All right. But this is like your home track, right? Exactly. This is like where it all started. Okay, right on clip one. This this does feel pretty sketchy. This is definitely the fastest point of the track. Where they're launching launching into a blind and having two orange random media vests. Probably shouldn't be here, but yeah, definitely not. You should not be here. Disclaimer: We're showing you what not to do. We're doing it to keep you safe. Oh, I think they're coming. Let's see how bad this is. <laughs> I really shouldn't be here. Damn! Oh, I've had enough of this already. That's enough. Hey, wait, should we be heroes and just run across the start line? Um. Yeah, I'm not gonna show how we got across there, but I'm gonna click my fingers and we're gonna be over that side. Oh, this could very well be the last bit of footage of me ever. So, mom, dad, love you all. It's his fault. You'll be fine. This track looks fast on camera, but up this close, it is just insane. I can't even get through. Ah, dude, I, that's some skin. Why did you not jump over the fence here? Sound of the cars just echoing off this forest is deadly. Where are you bringing me this time? These definitely aren't media designated zones. Such a good shot, I love it. The hills are alive with the sound of... One more sketchy spot. This is like right at 
when they come out of the wall. So if they hit, it's coming right to you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Are you leaving? I'm going to go get my car. I think. So you bring me to the sketchy spot and then you just say, right, good luck, have fun. Good luck. See you later. All right. Some tour guide he is. down in a really sketchy spot and I am not staying with it so this is for your eyes only yeah that's fast jump into competition I'm gonna give you guys a little tour of the pits that most people don't see if you're not here at the event we're here with Eric Gottschall this is his team they've got an amazing setup and he has two cars and this weekend he needed them because this beautiful carbon Kevlar one series well there's another one over here that didn't have such a good fate yesterday Eric had steering issues the steering uh, binded on his car and he hit the wall at like 70 miles an hour and as you can see major major damage the chassis leg completely destroyed the whole chassis kinked it's about an accident that you're going to have in drifting probably one of the worst i've seen but due to the safety stuff with the hands devices and everything he walked out of the car got in the other car this morning and he's ripping on track so yeah this thing got absolutely mangled. very famous car we have from nakamura so you can already see he's been hitting and there he is the man himself how are you man Hi. you good hey. going good oh don't uh, crash you it crashed you uh, yeah Fix? What do you fix to get it ready? Oh, nice. yeah. yeah. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Have fun. Hey guys. Bit of a crash. That's kind of the phrase for everybody on the pits today, this weekend is a uh, crash. It's a crash. It's a crash. It's a crash. <laughs> it's a tough track. I like all the colored suspension parts on here. This car is so iconic. But it's had a tough old life. This thing has hit a lot of things. With the way Naoki drives, it's like on the edge all the time, headlights, tail lights, everything gone. And of course, this is his first time driving Riga, so we're excited to see how he gets on. Hopefully, they get it sorted for qualifying. This weekend, Ian is away. He's got uh, some personal family stuff he's got to deal with. So Eddie Power is with me in the tower. And uh, we haven't commentated in about like, oh, probably about five, six years. So it's going to be fun. And qualifying's about to kick off. This is where all the business starts. This is where the event starts for me. And up to this point, it's just a build up. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, to round four of the Drift Masters European Championship. We're here, it's Riga, baby, and one of our favorite tracks on the calendar. The championship fight is heating up. My name is Dave Egan. I'm going to be talking you through all of the action this weekend alongside my good friend, Eddie Power. The power in the tower is back. Eddie, this is one of our favorite tracks to watch and talk about. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. One of the most exciting tracks and layouts on the calendar in Drift Masters. I'm delighted to be joining you here this weekend. And with the stack grid that we have here, 60 drivers whittling it down to become the King of Riga, I think we're in for a real special treat here this weekend. Well, you know what? I'm sick of talking. I want to see some driving. So right now, guys, for you at home and everybody here in attendance, let's go to qualify. And he is definitely the shark in the water in this championship as he sits outside the top five But he's got to win everything to get the third championship in a row And this has to be the biggest run of his life here in Riga as he goes to the edge of the circuit He's faster than anyone else through there And this is absolutely rocket ship stuff from Peter Vjainsek as he fires through the course a full throttle, full angle, full commitment to the wall. Fjainsek's going for it here. This could be the perfect run of the Riga circuit as he takes it to the wall, buries the taillights in it, and that is exceptional from a man who wants this championship. Nothing short of outrageous from Peter Visek there. Absolutely mind-boggling, crazy, insane run. Fjainsek go, he's already in first. It's a 98 in qualifying for Peter Fjainsek. All right, so that's qualifying done. That was actually an awesome qualifying session. My voice, as you can hear, has gone full Miley Cyrus right now. I've been screaming all day. I think Eddie did an awesome job. He's been out of the hot seat for a while. Now we're gonna head back to our Airbnb, chill for the evening, try and gather some of our energy 
before the madness of tomorrow because this place is always mad at main events. Why have you got salmon jerky? It's from Alaska. Stop! It's not funny! Lucas! Just for reference, oh. you guys can't smell this, but it smells absolutely horrendous. Lucas! Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! Oh fuck! <laughs> Going to punch you in the face. Like, obviously, Josh and Lucas are idiots, because Josh has just done a beatbox song. Your lad's throwing salmon jerky out the window and you're wearing little shorts. <laughs> You purposely went out of your way to spend money driving to get shorts that were from Lidl. Jersey shorts there, man. Ladies, he is single. You want this level of style in and around you. There's nothing wrong with my shorts. A collective of idiots here, and, and Charlie. <laughs> you got the great dad joke in today. Go on. You ran as a duck on the front of the car. He's going to have a swack of it. <laughs> you literally said, I came back for this. Okay, the official lace race. Come on, punch tips. And three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do that? Why are you so good at sucking things? Why are you trick me? I said, Why have you never shown me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my mum has a cock. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> So as you guys know, every time we're behind the smoke with BC Racing at these venues, but I do a little walk around the paddock to see the things that you wouldn't see on the live stream. There's a little car show here. And we always like to check out the local culture and what they're into. Let's go for a wander. So I reckon I get a t-shirt. I might get a hat. I might get a thousand horsepower too, Jay. Just sitting here. This might be over the weight limit though. I'd say Ryan Air take that, wouldn't they? Bit of cling film, you'd be all right. On first glance. Uh, let's try and figure out what's going on here. It's definitely a drift car. It's got a very complicated cooler setup. What is that? It's, it looks to me... That's a V12. Is it a 12? That turbo? is indeed a V12. It's a V12 turbo Mercedes 190E. It's a mad car, isn't it? It's got a spoiler on a spoiler on a spoiler. That's, That's cool. cool. The rest of it for me is very nice. I like this. I know the Ray 36. This well, one is... Well, this one has the most impressive modification of all of them. Irish range, lads. Our friend Christians, he's driven this all the way from Ireland to was he in Poland and then he was here. He was at Old Trace. He's at Old Trace in Poland. This car has done more mileage than we have this year and it's still going pretty good. It's a really nice build too. I'm a big fan of this black Estonian S15. Black on black. I think it works really well, the black on black on a S15. I'm a big fan. Can't wait to get my S15 back, Darren in Group D. So we are walking back to the car to go back to the pits and it has started to rain. By the way, Black Smoke Racing, thank you for the sunglasses. These are not my style, but I think I, I look a lot summery. Sorry, a lot. Try it again. Try it again. again. I have to do a whole day of this. I look like it's sunny. Does that make sense? My appearance would give the impression that it's sunny. Your wet t-shirt doesn't give that appearance though. Wet t-shirt contest now, that's the future. Drift Games wet t-shirt competition. We're just lads from the office. Nobody wants to see that. That's it, that's a quick way to get demonetized. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, if you want an unpredictable nature in your drifting, well we've got a ton of it here this weekend. My name is Dave Egan, hello everyone. I'll be talking you through all the action with my good friend and colleague Eddie Power. And I'll tell you what, right now the wipers are on, the tension is high and we are ready to head to top 32. Okay, top 32 is over. That was pretty miserable. Let's go in and see what the uh, rest of the lads think and how they got on. How much did you all love that rain? No, not one one bit. You didn't enjoy yourself, no? Not at all. I was dressed like, I don't know, in a plastic sheet. I got ripped, I got some tape to tape it up. It was a horrible experience. 
think we've covered this before, Blaine, but I once again was sopping. That's the second event in a row that you've been sopping. Second. Well, it's the second Driftmasters event in a row, but LZ World Tour was also sopping. It was, yes. Goodwood sopping. I've got trench foot, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you were complimenting your own shot there. So you see the shot I see I think Josh forgot that he was also recording audio. So I've been waiting for this shot for about 20 minutes and I... Oh! <laughs> oh! Slightly forgot how I was recording audio. It's actually more good Just for you. Thank you very much, man. Cheers, man. Thank you. About to get my eardrums blown by Dwayne again. It's from your words. What's been going on? We had another engine failure, so it's not my luck. But uh, look, we'll be back and we'll be back a lot stronger next year. I think it's time for a 2J. All right, top 16 parade is done. Time for everybody to get back out on track. It hasn't rained for the last hour, so hopefully track might dry up and we get some better drifting. Stop laughing at me while I'm trying to do my talking. You know I don't like doing it. <laughs> I'm not good at this, I don't like doing it. I'm doing it for you guys, I'm doing it for you. So I've driven down to where the start line is because the pits are so far away from the start line. When you get a little bit later on into the competition, they all set up hot pits just so they can be closer to the start line. So pretty much everyone who has got through the top 16 is in the top eight. All has their vans, cars, pit crew all down here. Everybody is down here watching the live stream as well. transition from Laurie Heinen. Heinen's coming for it here. McKeever on full steam. Heinen takes the front bumper off his car but stays in it and he's all over Dwayne McKeever. This is the fight we wanted to see. Laurie Heinen up onto the door as he pushes Dwayne McKeever into the wall and into a stop and we have carnage. That was a wild battle. Yeah, Jack Shannon, if he takes down his brother Connor here, could see himself going top of the championship with Larry Heine in the second place. Look at the this size weekend. of this drone, it's massive. Then you have a switch him around the other run, and you can see that. Do your hand this way a bit more? Okay, there, yeah? No, like just do that with your hand. <laughs> we are about to find out. They get ready to leave the line. It is Shanahan and Bertan. Here we go. Bertan's up through the gears, up to 75 miles an hour, and Shanahan is going to go for that early initiation. Look at the snap to angle. Jack Shanahan is all over Bertans. They're still in this one. How is he getting away with these transitions? As Jack Shannon reels in the youngster, he is not going to be outdone today. He is more aggressive. He's got more pace. And now one more transition to go. Bertans goes to the wall. Shanahan goes to the door. We go to our knees once again in appreciation of the talent we have seen here today. That is how you finish one of the craziest events we've ever seen. Well, you know what, Dave? I am in absolute awe of what we have just witnessed. And, you know, I think Jack Shanahan may be in tears behind the wheel because he puts his hands over his eyes. Jack Shanahan gets the win! And there was no question after the most unbelievable chase run we've ever seen in Driftmasters.
for Juha Rittinen in third place on the podium. Up for second place in the King of Rigas, for Nikna. Oh, I'm an absolutely over the moon. I came here 10 years ago this weekend as a 13 year old for Riga, and I've wanted to win this event since. And oh, I must say, it feels good. Your 2023 King of Riga from Ireland, you're up for Jack Shanahan. It's round five, the penultimate round of Driftmasters. We're in the Iron Drift King venue. It is wild, it's about to get smoky. This is one of the best weekends of the year. These boys are about to rip it up. Let's go exploring around some of the cranes. Josh Holdsworth. Hardly working or working hard. You know, you've caught me at actually a bit of a creative moment here. I'm trying to get a shot from here with the glass reflection. This is the most creative thing I've been here. Getting real jazzy then, real jazzy. Real jazzy, I've got a reflection going on here from there that I realise that the window opens. And then I'm not too sure what I'm trying to achieve, but it's a bit of like a mirror effect. So if I was to just do this. Come, Max Heidelich. I spent ages lying in the sort of. Insane. I'm not sure if this looks safe. I can see through the floor. No, oh, is it? Oh, that's get out of there. <laughs> There's only certain areas you're allowed to go up, and like it's this yellow barrier. Strict instructions. There is a 500 euro fine if you stray outside of the yellow. I think we're outside of the yellow right now. No, no, we're not. Oh, everything, no, because... everything is okay. Right, let's go for more exploring. Josh Holes are getting the legs out today. First time for everything. It's not a good time to mention that I'm afraid of heights, is it? Whoa! <laughs> it's not really that stable either. Don't say that to me. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to find the next spider I can and put it on you. No. That's another thing about these buildings. There's some pretty big boys here. Right? I would say that one was 90% on the limiter. That is no exaggeration. This used to be like a massive quarry and then, you know, they're not using it anymore. Filled it with water, made this beautiful still lake and then turned the rest of it into this big amphitheater venue. Oh, watch my head. Which is just unbelievable. This is like an industrial version of the last vlog when I went round the forest with Lucas. Ladies, you went through it first. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dwayne McKeever on the start line. <laughs> Shooting stance, yo! How come he always has to come here or anywhere where I'm at and just distract me? We're both getting the same shot. I was just up there, I just came down. Alright, good to know. I'm not gonna go up there then. Thanks. We need. We... Where the f Why use that one? Nah. Once again, here's a shot of Laurie Heinen in his car. I love this thing. I can't not put this in the vlog. Oh, that sound! 
Josh, what's this track like to shoot? Honestly, even though it's incredible, the location is harder than you think because even though there is massive things, whatever these machines are in the background, it's hard to actually capture them. But then again, we've been coming here for quite a few years and I don't know, I feel we've got a little bit better, but the drone stuff in my eyes is that, that that's like the best because you see the whole thing is like a teardrop into the sea. And I will say at night time it's incredibly tough because on the live stream I'm not sure if you can tell how dark it actually looks but like there's barely any light or like last night we we're going through footage and we couldn't even tell which cars were, were what because there was like no light so like I can only imagine like if we have a hard job the drivers have a much harder job because we won't be able to see anything obviously we're great videographers so um, we make anything look easy and good humble humble as well <laughs> Oh, it's weird for you. What's that, sorry? It's weird for you. No, I love it. No. You're filling in, you're doing a pit recording today, yeah? So, um, this is, uh, Becky Evans. my name's Pecky Evans and I've got beautiful no. hair. I found out 15, get chucked in at the deep end. 15 minutes before they went live, they were like, uh, Becky's plane got cancelled yesterday. We've got no one to fill her in while she's uh, at the airport now being picked up. Uh, will you do it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Hell yeah. Doing a good job so far. Yeah, I love it. Of course I'll do it. Hell yeah. This is sick. Yes! Jesus Christ. Yes! He's in. He's in. This could be. It's it's this or squinty with the sun, so what do you think? Game changing. Both of these. This is the blaney ones. Well, like, they're both bad options. That's how no, these do not suit your head. Yeah. Those do. So we got, we got <laughs> these, these are worse. No. Yeah. 60s band. Yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit or the guy from Star Trek. <laughs> Purple socks. Yo, I got you. It's a strong look. Stronger than I want it to be, to be honest. I'm gonna wear Lucas's sunglasses. Oh, I put the uh, Jesses. That's exactly what I say. I am, they are girl sunglasses. These are literally the definition of blocking out the haters. This is, but they are girl sunglasses, you do know that. They're Lucas's, so same thing. Why does you look at Lucas and you wouldn't see anything else about it, but for some reason that you. Do I swap? No. Yeah, I wouldn't swap it up. I'll done being class for the day, so see you later. A bit hot? It's very warm. I think the uh, the sunburn's gonna look pretty bad today, I think. The Irish farmer's time to be had. We'll get it. We'll oh. hunt it out. <laughs> Who we caught up with? Hello, good morning, people on the internet. The last time I saw this, it was in the flesh. It was a bad idea that I still didn't believe would be around. Now it's a bad idea, but we're in Germany. And it works? It works, it drives. We actually drove it uh, three days ago on the roads. I mean, for everyone watching, it's, it was closed roads in Romania. Um, yeah. But done by professional drivers. Because you have no shock absorbers on the back of the Nothing, car. Nothing, it's no, a go-kart. It's a go-kart, basically. Look who it is. Hello. First time uh, Drift Masters event for us. And first event in Germany as well. And the boys are coming to Poland as well. To the fun. Mm. Well, coming to Poland, you are in Poland already, so it's, we're coming. I'm not gonna drive just three hours to you and yeah. Yeah. nothing. We're gonna, we're gonna drive from Ireland to see you guys and see everybody else. But anyway, I wanted to admire this from. This is the stupidest car that anyone has ever built that turned into the coolest yeah. car that anyone ever built. Uh -huh. The seats are amazing. Those were the only seats that would fit. And surprisingly, they are size S and anyone can fit in them. You could fit in them. The guys are fit in there in Alt Race. So. Oh, Jesus. Easy. Ah. Yeah. I'm in. And didn't even need to cut your leg off. <laughs> I might not get out again. We actually took it for the road a couple days ago and it did good. It's it overheated, the, the clutch was slipping and... Yeah, but it did some kilometers, maybe like I three. love the handbrake placement, it's my favorite. Yeah, it's for Australia. Because, <laughs> you know, one day we're planning to take it to Australia most likely, so we need to feel comfortable there. And you can also flip the car and still pull the handbrake. Exactly. You have to climb out over the tire. Smooth. But it's very cool. How does it feel to drive it on the road with the exposed wheel this close to your knee? Very safe. Very safe. I, I don't <laughs> Safety is our number one priority. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I know you guys are busy selling merch. We're going to catch up with you guys in Poland. We're going nice to see you and me and Josh go over there. Don't melt too much in the heat. Enjoy yourselves. Keep boogie off the beer. <laughs> Oh, that was sore. So this track is actually really dangerous. This is one of the cars I actually really, really enjoyed looking at earlier on on track. And uh, 
Yeah, didn't go didn't go very well. Super sad. We're down here at the back end of the track and there's also a beach. Wouldn't see this in Mandela now. A beach, beautiful lake to go swimming in. I have uh, I have brought my swimming shorts. Like you have to get in, into, in your swimming shorts in there. That's part of the rules. It doesn't even have to be a rule. Well, it, think could, about it could be against the rules to do so, and I think I might still do All the rest of us have to do a professional job this weekend for Driftmasters. You're kind of on the edge. You're in the Drift Games category. You can go swimming in some little shorts in the lake. Two hours later. Blaine asked me to come with him, um, and now he's all the way out there. <laughs> Unlucky playboy! <laughs> he thinks I'm coming back. Is ridiculous it's the lowest mx5 i've ever seen yesterday he got stuck on an extension cord there was an extension cord across the track with a tiny rubber protector on it and he got beached on it that they needed wood i mean this off the ground how he even got in here i don't know but that is baller so one thing we pride ourselves here at Drift Games is having professionals work on these events. People that can take the pressure, that can also turn up at the right time. None of our staff are ever caught being idiots. Well, except Blaine. You alright Blaine? Huh? You having a good time? Having doing a, a bit of digging? Having a great time. Doing a bit of digging? Look at the scoop on that. Did you get a good scoop in there, you did? That's all that matters. So we're here at the Top 16 Parade, it is primed and ready for a wild night of drifting. However, I've got something cool to show you. This is Kevin Bazor's car, which is not a 2 Series. This is actually an E46, and the reason you know that is that E46 trim, watch, and there's no line here. There's a front clamshell and a back clamshell of a 2 Series onto an E46, and they sell this kit. So a pretty cool way of making your older car look modern. So say an E46 drift car, you got a very modern looking Eurofighter style. 2 Series. I thought this was an M2. There you go. Cheap M2, boys. Fooled me. gentlemen welcome to the craziest drift event you've seen anywhere in the world this top 16 drivers came out for a parade in front of a very energetic fan base here in Germany but they made it, are made up from 23 different countries because that's how many are represented on the grid my name is Dave Egan I'll be talking you through all the action alongside my friend Ian Waddington we're about to kick it off the fans are ready the marshals are ready the judges are ready we hope you guys are ready that guy is definitely ready it's time to head to the top 16 
nine seconds in the lead. Shannon in the chase, they are gone. Yeah, the light goes green, they come through the gears. Vincent's gonna want this one more than ever. He fires down onto initiation, but look at Shanahan, he's right with him. He's gone so that anyone's been on the outside zone. He's door to door, wheel to wheel with Vincent as he flicks the car across the circuit. Vincent tries to upset Shanahan, but it didn't pay off. And now Shanahan wants to repay the favor. He dives across, almost makes contact. He's on the wheel, he's on the door. He pushes the champion across the line. He's going for it here from the off. Last run of the night. Vincent fires in, that's closer than anybody's been here on the track. Vincent's hungry, a little Vincent as he now gets back up onto the door of Connor Shannon as they come through. Vincent now starts to turn the screw. Big dive up onto the door. Shannon goes to the wall. Shannon is almost touching every moment on this track. Vincent backs off a little bit as he comes back into that last corner. This is what makes Drift Masters the most special place on earth. And there's no winner, it's a one more time, and why are they celebrating? These people are insane. They are going again. Initiates the same time as Shanahan flames are rough from the back of the car as he knows he's in his team onto the door of that GT86. Shanahan goes to the wall. Vincex closer than he was before. He now makes a big dive in outside zone four. His wheel to wheel. This is closer than they've ever been as they fire through that transition. Shanahan on a flyer, but Vincex not going anywhere. And now the separation of Shanahan takes it across the Welcome to the PGA Narodowe in Poland. As you can see, I'm not in my official Driftmasters gear. This is pre-event. We normally don't film any of this, but I thought this place was so special that we wanted to show you guys basically all the cool facts and figures about how all of this came to be. So 12 months ago, the decision was made that we needed a bigger stadium. We've already done three or four different stadium events in Poland. We started in Płock a couple of years ago. We moved out to 10,000 people. Last year we had Watch, which was about 12,000 people. But jumping to 53,000 people sold out is absolutely mind-blowing. So this stadium, as you can see, and if you're not aware, is the home of Drift Masters this weekend, the finale of the championship, with six drivers gunning for the title. 
Um, it's going to be very competitive. This stadium, as you can see, every seat is red and white because we're in Poland. And this is the biggest national stadium in Poland. It was built in 2012 for the European uh, Football Championship. And that was the idea. Since then, it's hosted Ed Sheeran, Beyonce, everybody. I think The weekend was here two weeks ago. Isn't that crazy? The weekend sold out this stadium. And then two weeks later, Drifting sold out this stadium, which is mind-blowing to me. Who's been in the sport since like 2010. This is the biggest stadium in Poland. So the capacity for this stadium is about 57,000 people. You'll see all these banners on the first five rows. That's just to, for health and safety, for any debris. That's why they're there. So we already have 53,000, but if you add in all the media, the staff, the teams, this is roughly around 55,000 people in here on Saturday night. This track, well, this was just laid yesterday. So the tarmac that I'm standing on is still quite sticky. Um, the idea is it's all concrete on the floor. Could we drift on the concrete? Sure, but there's no grip on the concrete. Also, you'd leave a lot of damage to the stadium. And the idea with this event is that you get here, you do what you do, and then you gotta have it cleaned up within 48 hours so they can go back to being a stadium again. So 72 hour build, 48 hour cleanup. That is 24 hours a day. Started with just putting down dirt, then obviously they level all of the dirt, then they put all of the tarmac on top of it. After the tarmac, we put in all the walls. But I wanna talk to you about the walls. So these walls, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. So these walls are specifically de designed for this purpose. These are not walls used for roadways or anything. These are just for this drift event. In case you don't believe me, in Polish this means barrier for, drift to, for drifting. So these walls were designed specifically for this event because the walls we had before used to fall over. They were about, per wall, they were, I think they were about one ton or 1.5 ton. These are 3.2 ton just for this. It's very, very thick concrete. These catch barriers also completely created just to fit into these specific walls to obviously protect the audience from any debris from the cars. So not only on top of everything else, these barriers and catch fences are just for this specific event. Want to know how much they cost? I'm not going to tell you every cost, but these 220,000 euro just for the walls and the catch fences. Here's another interesting story. Obviously, to make the center of this track look cool, you've got artificial grass, right? So artificial grass for this amount of area, probably about 10 to 12,000 euro. But it didn't pass health and safety. All of the grass had to be fireproof because it's a motorsport event. 72 grand's worth of grass right there. Just in case you're getting the level of the cost of this event. Now, obviously, the place is sold out, but this is huge risk from everybody involved in Drift Masters. This track was laid down overnight last night. It'll probably dry. We're going to do a little smoke test on it later on just to make sure it's all good. As I said, we've got two massive stages here in front. So if you look up, if you're in the top seats, you've got these massive screens. So this is going to play all of our uh, broadcast on uh, Red Bull TV. We don't say live stream anymore because that's old school drift talk. Live stream used to be like 10 guys with three cameras. This is like 110, 120 people running the broadcast for Red Bull TV. So it's a TV show and it's broadcast to, as far as I know, in 13 different languages across 26 different countries from Red Bull TV all the way to live television. So a lot of people don't know that we actually are live to across the world and then it goes into highlight reels. So it goes out to millions of people, which is really, really crazy for drifting as well, which is the help of obviously Red Bull TV getting us to do that. The roof on this, I'm, I'm gonna get to this in a bit. The roof is crazy. So this PVC roof, the cabling alone in this roof is 1,200 tons. Just for the cabling, the whole roof is PVC and that has to be open for the event because all the smoke obviously is gonna be an issue for anybody sitting high. So this roof later today will open and it will stay open for the event. Thankfully, we have no rain uh, forecast because you can't obviously have all the fumes and all the smoke in here with all these people and no ventilation. So how do we get the smoke up and out of the stadium? Well, we have 16 industrial fans that are huge, big, massive V8 fans that sit in here and push that air and all the smoke up to try and get the smoke and clear it as quick as possible, which is also another nightmare that we're not really gonna know much about until we go live. I'm gonna stand up on this, bring you up on this. So this is quite a cool view of the inside of the track. So the wild thing is when you come up here and you actually get a, a sense of the scale, it's really hard in video to see this, but it's absolutely huge. I mean, to think every single one of those seats is sold out, like not sold out, I mean every seat, specifically that seat is sold out all the way around the stadium. It's nine stories high for drifting, which is crazy. Now where we just came in, you'll see the tarmac just out to the gate. This is gonna be straight out to the paddock. So paddock is outside the stadium. The cars are running. 
in twos essentially for practice and for qualifying and everything else and they'll do a, a lap of the circuit you see now the guys are currently painting the red and white markers along the wall and on the inside of the track so um yeah anticipation is building people are landing in airports all over i mean this is the crazy thing we have 53,000 people here but 25,000 people are flying into Warsaw from all over the world to watch this event. So there is more people, this is just the fact I'm going to give you, more people flying into this event than has ever been at a drift event before. And this is also another interesting thing. But if you look at this, this uh, doorway here, if you go from that doorway to where the Pege in Norodoy is, see that? Yeah. And up, just there, that's the attendance record for drifting broken. So from that door, to there and up to the top is the most amount of people that have ever been at a drift event before and that is just one quarter of the stadium it's mind-blowing so we're now in one of the millions of corridors so this is where the national polish football team played last week they lost 12 million they weren't too happy about that but that's why the floor is all rubber because it's all for studs so people can and it's really crazy how our drift masters media room which only has one more on in it at the moment. Just me. So this is actually the dressing room for the football teams when they play here. As you can see, you uh, might recognize this guy, Lewandowski. So he would have sat here a week ago and now he's been replaced by a much more talented person than Josh Holdsworth in this room. So this is where they would actually get dressed and run out onto the pitch. So this is where our media room is. So it's just really random. So it's the first media room we've ever had with full showers and a, what is it, a physio room, just it's, in case. It's the first time we can actually all have communal showers together. There is a shower room of about 10, so really looking forward to that one. Right? I am not looking forward to that. I don't want to be involved in that, no. I'm pretty sure nobody's getting involved in that, Josh. Just me? I'm going to disappoint you just before we kick off the event, but I'm pretty sure everyone's just going to shower in the hotel. Anyway, we'll move on from this. All right, so the guys are getting set up. What's up, boys? Already, these are the amazing drone pilots we have at Drift Masters. They're humble guys, but they are very, very good. You guys will know from the footage, and this is all our start line marshal with his, uh, his camera for on the track, getting ready, getting all the testing done. You see on the track now, we got the big inflatable ramp for all the motorcycle jumps. I say motorcycle jumps like I'm 70 years of age. I don't know why, like moto, moto jump, jump, freestyle motocross. That's probably what it's called, right? Um, so they're all getting set up right now. I want to go up high though and show you guys all of the uh, the commentary box. You got to see the commentary box. So we're in the lift now heading up towards the VIP, but just to let you know that the scale of this event, if you look at this poster, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Beyonce, Harry Styles, Pink, Depeche Mode, The Weeknd, Imagine Dragons, football, national football team, and then Driftmasters. So welcome to our commentary booth, definitely the biggest commentary booth I've ever seen. We've got a couch, we've got room to play football, I think, in here. Um, and all the walls are soundproofed, so they're all sound deadened, so that you, my voice, as you can hear, has no echo in here, which is really dead sound, which is really cool. This is our commentary position. The three judges will be here, and Ian and I will be here. And what a view we have of the stadium, as you can see, uh, turning on the screens in the middle right now, just testing those. And obviously this whole event is almost at night time, so it starts just at dusk, and then it goes into the night, so all the lights come on, the whole place looks fantastic, so... Um, yeah, I'm really overwhelmed actually because as much as I'm trying to explain to you guys in an entertaining way, even though I know this event is coming and we've all planned this for so long, to see it in the flesh is just mind blowing. Um, crazy, yeah. Wow, wow. This is two hours before the gates even open and what, four hours before top 32? Yeah. And they're already queuing. They're already queuing, every gate. Yeah, this is the way. Today the gate plan is, you're Gary Lineker? Yep. And I'm Roy Keane. Okay. So you're a good cop, I'll be a bad cop. Talking about setup, talking about setup, you're a professional. Get in there, drift. I can't do accents though, Dave. You're literally English, you can just literally just speak in your Gary Lineker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> go that parking, three, I, four, know, I feel like this person might just let us in. Go back down here, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go, 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 she got it back down. <laughs> So right now we are walking underneath the grandstands where all the seating is. We've got a lot of meetings to do this morning. I can't bring you guys into all of them because a lot of them are private and obviously to do with health and safety and production and everything else. But yeah, this is going to be a hell of a day. Just going to walk into that pole, Blake. <laughs> Let's 
say something profound, what, what do you say? We're ready. All the fans are working. All the lights have been tested. The halftime show rehearsals have been done. Audio's working, CO2's working, fireworks are working. We're ready. We're about, what, an hour and a half from doors opening. And then 53,000 people are going to fill every seat in here. For the wildest shit we've ever done. Oh, I've got goosebumps and we haven't even started. The minute you open the door, it's like Jurassic Park into just another world. Watch this. because they're working super hard here on, on all the Drift Games March stuff, but they're actually too busy to even talk to me, so um, this place is going to be wild for the next couple of hours. So it's pretty wild because we're with like a lot of friends this weekend, so our shop is beside Night Ride, beside LZ. Yeah, it's pretty cool to have all of us here at a Drift Masters event. It's like all the world's colliding. It's so cool. I think in my head I just keep thinking this is huge, this is yeah. huge and then It's the big one Yeah, we it? drove in this morning and we got to the gate and there was like thousands of people waiting Already two waiting. hours before yeah. the show it's and just crazy. stood out there to soak it up and it's like wow oh. Like, I think as soon as the first car leaves in line the place is going to be packed oh, and it's going to be It's going to be crazy, I can't wait to be down there for Top 16 Parade Yeah, I'm going to go down for a little bit I just want to go down and soak up the atmosphere because It's once in a lifetime <sighs> I mean, yeah History. History in the making. History in the making. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest drift event in the world. Wow. It goes when you say that, Kevin. Oh. She's good to go. She's good to go. Let's get this done. You're hyped, Dean. I am more than hyped today. This is the big one. This is it. <laughs> ah, we've come a long way. Five years. Five years doing this. She's starting to fill up, boys. She is starting to fill up. Well, if you're excited, Becky, we are even more excited here up in the rooftops. We can see the fans pouring into the biggest event that drifting has ever witnessed. We will be at max capacity, 53,000 people when we go under the lights for the main event top 16 later on today. My name is Dave Egan. I'll be talking you through all of the action alongside my good friend and colleague, Ian Wellington. Ian, we've been in this sport for over 10 years. We've never seen anything quite like this. This is like a dream, the sport of drifting, 20 years ago had its first ever European event. There was 100 people there. Well, now we are filling out stadiums with this incredible championship, had a huge championship fight on the line. It is a dream, Dave. It's an absolute dream. I walked out to the stadium earlier and I took a round look at all these faces saying that yeah, this, is this how far yeah. European yeah. drifting has come? How much further can it go? Well, I need to get today underway before we move into the future, but what a dream, what a weekend. And tonight, history is gonna be made on that track. And we are ready, you are ready. The fans are ready and the stadium is ready as we head to top 32.
not that emotional. That's a lie, I'm very emotional. I get cry right now. This is insane. Just look around, Blaine. Why are you looking at my ugly ass face? Look around. Oh, Fifty-three thousand. All right, boys and girls, this is the moment. Ten years in the making. Fifty-five thousand people. I'm about to go on the mic and pump them all up. I'm absolutely shaking. Every hair on my body is standing up. We never imagined this when we started doing drift events. This is the pinnacle, and uh, yeah, this is exciting stuff. I am nervous wreck. Usually I could talk for days, but look at this place. I'm blown away by all of this. Somehow we skipped from 15,000 people to 50,000 people. I'm gonna cry in about 10 minutes when the street or, or the, the parade is going on. And I, we're gonna hear Dave speak to the fans. And I think it's gonna be like where I'm like, <laughs> trying to keep it stable while in focus. We made it! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event! Tonight, one of three countries will become the 2023 Driftmasters Champion! Will it be Ireland? Will it be Finland? Will it be Poland? Tonight you guys have broken all the records. You are in the history books. This is the biggest drift event in the world! I need you to get everybody here to stand up on their feet.
course I cut it out though. <laughs> Man, it's it's Star Wars, you know. It's like something doesn't make sense. It's uh, <laughs> no words. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Drift Masters European Championship. We are here live in Poland. We're live on Red Bull TV. My name is Becky Evans, and I'm joined by Dave Egan. Dave, it's lovely to have you here. the shop because things are getting a little bit spicy out here on track. Championship fight has come down to absolutely horrific squeaky bum time. Keen Leonard is currently furiously on his laptop. If Conor Shanahan beats or wins his next battle against Paul Korpelinski, he is champion. If he loses, he could still possibly be my champion if he gets third, even if Laurie wins the event. So like there's, there we are, like four battles left. There are so many permutations of which way this way this didn't go. Everybody is like, like, I literally have like goosebumps. Like you build a stadium like this for drifting and it comes down to an absolutely unbelievable finish to the show. It's, it's Exactly what you want, Frank. It's crazy. Oh, it's amazing, dude. This is the, the craziest thing ever. Literally, the best trip event I've ever been to in my life. Connor's on the line, Korpelinski's on the line. John Shannon and Liam Keane have just joined above us here. Oh my f***ing nerves. Shannon in the lead position, Korpelinski in the chase, and Korpelinski's right there. Korpelinski dives into that chase position, Shannon goes to the wall, Korpelinski goes to the door. Korpelinski's hungry for it here. This is inch perfect from both drivers, the Irishman and the Polish. Jeez, this is unbelievable. Look at this run, Korpelinski pushing the door in. I actually don't, I actually don't know what to say. Indoors, all the way across the circuit, Shanahan makes a break line. Korpelinski goes into our first time fight, but Shanahan is on the door. Connor goes for the wheel across oh, the line. Forget it, forget it. Oh. It's a more time, no. We can't take any more of this. Wow. It's just gone. Connor has just gone one more time. But. Connor doesn't get to decide his fate now, so Laurie Heinen goes up next. If Laurie loses, Connor's automatically champion. Who knows? Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. Absolutely 90 with nerves and running around the place, but I hope you'll forgive me. I've lost the words. Shanahan calculated from Korbelinski, they don't want to make a mistake this time. Shanahan deep in outside 
turn one, Korbaliski fainted on the side. He almost takes the front end off of his car on the transition. He does take the front end off the car. As Shanahan gets into the wall, Korbaliski stays with him. He doesn't care about the front bumper. Oh, and he tags Shanahan on Korbaliski's thirsty oh, ball. get away, no chance of Alessia this time from Shanahan as he jumps into it. Korbaliski not as deep onto the wall as Shanahan. Korbaliski drags the back end of the S14 around the wall. Shanahan's as close, if not closer, than Korbaliski takes the risk. Shanahan up onto the door, into the wall, onto the back pass of Shanahan! That is unbelievable here. Shanahan is the champion! Shanahan is the champion! Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have to drift finish. masters, baby. championship the starlight marshal <laughs> is pumping up the crowd the party's beginning in Poland. Oh, the look lights, at the lights are on all look around at the, the stadium all the lights are illuminating the stadium this is a special wow. moment here we go the final of drift masters this year heinen to lead him in yeah look at this heinen on it already as he fires through look at shannon are you serious that's the closest we've seen so far Murray heinen an absolutely excellent in the outside zone but there is no shaking connor shanahan he wants it he's going wheel to wheel he pushes Laurie heinen and ran outside zone four there is no room for error they come through the center of the circuit Laurie heinen and looks for five and shanahan can't be lost he cannot get rid of him he is glued to the door as connor shanahan pushes Laurie heinen and through the finish line that's absolutely outrageous that is outrageous. that's the best i've ever seen that is one of the best runs i've ever seen in my lifetime this is the biggest run of Laurie Heinen's life. Can he take down the champ to win the biggest drift event of all time? Here we go. It's a big question and he's going to answer it right now. Shanahan fires in. Shanahan absolutely glued to the wall. No messing around. Heinen's with him though. But Heinen doesn't have the same proximity. And I don't think Heinen can ask the same question. I don't think he has the answer. The proximity isn't there from Laurie Heinen. And Shanahan glues the back bumper that GT86 to the wall as he fires through the touch and go. He is up and gone. And Laurie Heinen has to make it. Oh, but Shanahan takes the wall, almost throws it away as Heinen backs it in across the line. Unbelievable again. What a final. What a finish. A lifelong dream of being the best in the business, and he had to work for it all weekend. That is all from the 2023 Driftmasters Championship. We're back next year with more action, more smoke from this incredible sport. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next year, where it's gonna get bigger, badder, and better. Good night, we'll see you then. My voice is fucked yeah, up. I have nothing left at all. That's all.
the, like, the two of us nearly set each other off with the tears there. I was gone. Oh, everyone. I crying. couldn't look at you. No, I was we had to look the opposite ways. We I was like, looking out the window. I started to go. Dave was going. I was looking out the window. I was like, like, I ain't gonna be honest with you. I did. So <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was, <laughs> how can you not? Hey, I'm the only professional I, here. Are you crying? He's crying. I, Me and Kev were you, keeping you the were business. You were on the ropes. <laughs> I wasn't keeping the business. Oh, the he was on the ropes. I was. I had the watery eyes, but I was like, I went back to 2018 when he won in Pots, and I was like, I remember that. I remember playing football with him at Lid Nil when he was 14 years old, and to say that, well, you know, oh, I you always get a bit emotional. Oh, yeah, man, I, like, I don't care who wins it, but as long as the story yeah, is good, and, and that boy, story was, was that the story. two boys on the podium that were the standout. Yeah. Everyone wanted Connor and Laurie. They wanted to see who win it. Yep. One and two tonight. One and two in the championship. Unbelievable. Let's go check out. I'm sorry, we're still on it. We vlog and we vlog. I'm, my brain is just absolutely gone. I have nothing left. That's the longest week. Well, I'm sorry. I gotta go down and congratulate the boys. Ian. We're going. Thanks. By the way, everyone, this man is the reason Driftmasters are so good. Nice. The best commentator in the world, the best head judge in the world, and the most tired motherfucker in the whole world. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Am I rapping now? We're not rapping now. We go. We, we rap. We rap. Maybe. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 we rap this song. <laughs> right. the, the slave driver. Yeah. Let's go. How the okay. tables have turned. Oh. Yeah. Let's go and see this podium because I want to see how good it's going to be. Love it. What a, what a way to end this year. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> It's a shame nobody on the stream is going to see this, but this is a thank you to all the people that paid their hard earned to travel here to support this event. We had a little surprise at the end, full blackout and 100k of fireworks. That's how you finish the season. Whoa! started running my first events from the kitchen table of my now wife's dad's house because we didn't have anywhere to live and we never imagined we would have so many good relationships so many good friends so many good people come on the team to create things like this it's highly emotional because you're so con for me you're so pushed into the event you're marketing you're selling then you have to hope it lives up to the hype and then sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but tonight it did and the relief after the event for all the team in Driftmasters is just immense. To everybody who works on the Driftmasters team, they are the best in the world at what they do. They go so far beyond what normal people should do. And they don't do it for money. They don't do it for all the internet and the crap. They do it to make things like this happen. Memories for people, smiles on faces, making heroes out of normal people. Um, 
it's quite emotional to be honest. I, I try and keep it together, but uh, it's been a long road to here. And a lot of the times you want to quit, you want to give up, you don't want to do it anymore. And uh, yeah, you just try and stay humble, stay focused. And this has just been beyond, beyond anything we've ever expected. Um, I want to thank everybody from the people who watch to the people who participate, to my team, to my team who go over and above and work 20 hour days all the time at these events just to be the best. This has been the craziest night of drifting I've ever, this has put like, it's put 10 years of age on me to be honest, but it also puts 10 years more enthusiasm. I don't know, what do you think? Wembley Stadium, the Burnabout, Oh, we got to plan 2024 from here. All right, so at the end of this video, you would think we would think we're gonna finish up, but we go from here in two days' time to Toronto for the LZ World Tour in Toronto, the biggest event in Canadian history for drifting, making history twice in seven days. It doesn't feel real. I haven't processed anything. I want to thank all you guys for all your positive words on the comments. It means a ton to us. As Driftmasters 2023 over and out. What a story. What a journey. What a team. Love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Alright guys, there you have it. A full behind the scenes of the 2023 season. It was an amazing season. Driftmasters stepped up leaps and bounds. And for 24, Drift Games are going straight in at the deep end. Trucks, cars, team, halftime show. Go back and watch our two previous episodes. You'll understand all of that. We are hyped to go across Europe this year. We hope you guys will be supporting us. Stay tuned for more info and thank you for watching.